connected up there as well, but if you want to come down maybe a little bit closer, that would be good. Um, let me just give you a few. Can, can all of you see the projector there? If not, move back a little bit. Okay, make sure you guys can see the screen. Okay? Okay, let me just give you a quick program um, of just events that are going to happen. So, inshallah, you guys going to read the books first. Um, I know a lot of you guys have already bought the books, but if you want to buy more books or if you have not bought the books, um, after she's done reading, you can go buy them over here. And then and inshallah will be sitting on that table there if you want to get them signed. Um, and then the kids can also, there's crafts in the back for making Ramadan lanterns, and we do have a few people helping out. So we encourage the parents to help your kids as well, um, as it is a parent-led activity. Um, we don't have a volunteer for each kid. Um, okay, so inshallah, we're going to go ahead and start. Anything else? Hear me next? Okay, so I'm going to uh, pass the mic over to you.
But something that was missing in all of those stories was me. I didn't see any girls that looked like me or who had names like mine in any of the books that I read when I was growing up. And so that's what made me think about, again, how important it is to have stories for kids like you guys to read about kids like you, right? So I started running books for Scholastic Book Clubs. Do you guys get those at school? Do you get the papers from Scholastic where you can buy some books? Yeah. Yeah, so well, these were different stories about space and spies, and I wrote one about peanuts, and it, that's how I got my start writing for kids. But when I became a mother, and I started reading books to my own kids, I realized that there weren't that many good books about Muslims to share with Muslims, sorry, to share with non-Muslims in school, right? We had some books that were um, about how to be a Muslim, stories from the Quran, how to make salah, things like that, but there weren't books that you could take to school. And I saw other books from other cultures, like a Jewish book called Sand and Spider's First Hanukkah, about the Hanukkah celebration. I saw books by Chinese Americans about their celebrations, and I thought, we need books too that we can share in the library, share in our schools, so that people can learn more about who we are. So I looked into my arsenal of ideas, right, which was coming from my family, from my culture, from my friends, and from the books I read. Because like I said, the other books that I had been reading my whole life helped shape me. And then I wanted to write stories that were about things that Muslim people treasure, right? Things like Ramadan and Eid. But I also wanted to write books that were interesting for kids. And not just Muslim kids, but all kids. So that kids could see things that they like, like parties and presents and having fun, right? Which is an important part of And eating lots of food, right? Yeah. And, and getting head on, right? I put, I put fun cultural things in my stories, too. So the first book I wrote is called Night of the Moon. And it's a book about a little girl named Yasmin and her family. I'm going I'm to show you that book. Um, right now. And it's a little long, so I'm not going to actually read the whole thing, but I will do a picture walk and show you guys the story. Well, you guys vote. Do you want me to actually read the story, or do you want me to just show you the book? Show you one, and I'll read the other ones, okay? So this is called Night in the Moon. And a lot of people ask me if I was the one who drew the pictures, and it wasn't me. There was an artist named Julie Pashkin, and she made all the beautiful pictures in this book. But I wrote the words, right? So I'm the author, and Julie was the illustrator. So Night of the Moon starts off with a little girl named Yasmin at bedtime, and her mom calls her into the room and pulls back the curtains, and she tells her, come and take a look at the moon. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's have our questions. You know, at the end, we'll have questions. But he's saying he saw me at school. That's awesome. That makes me happy. Um, so mom calls Yasmin into the room and says, take a look at the moon. And Yasmin asks, what's so special about the moon? And mom points out that it's uh, the moon's first crescent, and it means that a new month is beginning. Can you guys see the moon? It's like a tiny little line in the sky. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the outline of it. And yes, we just wonder, a new month, but it's only the 17th. So mom explains that it's, the, it's a new month in the Islamic calendar, and she tells her how long ago people used the shape of the moon to keep track of days. And she asks her what month is starting, and yes, he says what? Do you know? She says Ramadan, right? The month of Ramadan is starting. And she'd been looking forward to Ramadan because it's a time filled with delicious foods and new clothes and lots of parties and her favorite thing ever, presents. Here guys meets at school with her friends and her teacher, and her teacher has a discussion about Ramadan, and Yasmin tells her friends what fasting is. And she tells them that you wake up early before the sun rises and eat, and then you don't eat all day until the sun goes down. And the kids are asking her if little kids have to fast, and she says, little kids don't fast, but maybe I'll try it for a day next year. 
Here, Dad speaks at home with her family, and they're preparing for the first at bar, and she asks her mom if fasting is hard. Mom says, it can be hard sometimes, but I don't mind. Fasting helps me remember to be grateful for the food I have and to be more patient, right? So the sun sets and the family invites him to sweet dates together and then they have a special dinner. Here, Yasmin's family goes to her cousin Hamza's house for the first Ramadan party. They have a big dinner and lots of dessert. And after, Yasmin peeks out the window at the moon, which looks like it's stuffed with good food too. Do you see the moon now? It's now a thick crescent, right? Here, Yasmin's family the next week goes to the mosque. They pop, they cook up food to share with other people, and Yasmin and her brother make cupcakes. And when they leave after a prayer, she looks up at the sky and sees that the moon is now half full, like a half-eaten cupcake. You see it? Yeah. So the days of Ramadan are quickly flying by, and every day Yasmin is looking for the moon. And one day she goes for a walk with Grandma, and they see that the moon is a brilliant circle. And Yasmin says, it's so pretty, and she wishes she could see it closer. And Grandma says, subhanallah, which is what she always says when she sees something beautiful, right? And the full moon means that Ramadan is already almost, it is half over. The next weekend, Yasmin's family has a barbecue for a fire, and Yasmin's bouncing on a trampoline and pretending that she's on the moon. And she sees that the moon is now, what, a half moon, right? It's shrinking again. So over the next week, she watches the moon slowly change shape and it becomes a thin crescent. And then one day, the moon is gone. She can't see it at all. And she realizes that the next night will be the night of the moon, the last night of Ramadan, which will then be followed by the holiday of Eid. Right, exactly. Here's the night of the moon celebration that the family goes to the next night. And the community center is all decorated like a place like this is all filled with people selling different things from different countries. So Yasmin gets some bangles from India and her brother gets a red hat with a tassel from Turkey like the one on the table over here, right? A fez. And Yasmin gets a green, a pretty new green dress to wear on she gets her hands painted with henna, and as she drives home, she sees the moon's first crescent. So thin, it's like a faint line of chalk in the sky. Do you guys see it? Yeah. The next morning is Eid, so the family goes to the mosque, and wish each other Eid with Barg after prayer, and then they visit family and friends, and everywhere they go, Yasmin and her brother get little gifts of money called Eid. But for Yasmin, the best part of the holiday, better than the henna, the new dress, and all the eating money she gets, is a surprise she gets at bedtime. Her mom and dad call her into the family room and give her a big box wrapped in shiny silver paper. And it's a special eat present, mom says, to help her watch the Ramadan next year. So Yasmin tears the paper off the box. And what is it? Right, a huge telescope. So she puts it together with her dad and she takes a look out the window and this is what she sees. SubhanAllah, Yasmin whispers as she looks at the wonderful moon. She can't wait for Ramadan next year. Right? At the end. That is the night of the moon. And like I said, I wrote this book so that people could take it to schools and put it in school libraries and um, in the public libraries and share with people so that they can learn about our holidays, right? But also so that you guys can have a book about you. And the next book I wrote is called Golden Jones and Silver Lanterns. Has anyone seen this before? Some of you guys have seen it. Some of you have it? Awesome. So this is a book of colors. You guys have it too. And this one isn't only about the holidays, but we, we, I talk about the holidays, but I also talk about other things that Muslims uh, are very special to Muslims, right? And this book was illustrated by a different woman uh, who's Iranian, and I think she did a really beautiful job, and the pictures are very special. So what color do you guys see there? Uh, red is the rug that kneels up to pray, 
facing toward Becca five times a day. So you guys see these beautiful prayer reds here, right? So of course they're not always red, right? You see that they come in all different colors, but I picked red for the book. What color do you see here? Blue. Blue is the hijab mom likes to wear. It's a scarf she uses to cover her hair. And again, right, we see lots of beautiful hijabs in the group today. They're not all blue, right? What color do you see here? Gold, right? Gold is the dome of a mosque, big and grand. Beside it, two towering minarets stand. What color is the hat here? White. White is a kufi, round and flat. Grandpa wears this traditional hat. What color do you guys see here? Black. Black is the ink I use to draw the Arabic letters that spell Allah, right? Good job. Here we see something that we are waiting for today, right? What color is that? Brown. Brown is a date, plump and sweet. During Ramadan, it's my favorite treat. You guys see how real those dates look? I think she mixes photography and painting together. That's why they have pictures look so real. Orange. Orange is the color of my henna designs. They cover my hands in leafy vines. So you saw henna was in the last book. It's in this book too. My name is henna, so I like to stick it in every book possible. What do you see here? Purple. Purple is an Eid gift just for me. I open it up and love what I see. And how about here? Yellow. Yellow is the box we fill on Eid with gifts of zakat for those in need. Who can tell me what zakat is? Money that we give to people who have less than us, right? <laughs> what about here? Green is the Quran I read with pride. Grandma explains the lessons inside. Who here is studying and learning how to read Quran? Any of you, right? Something that all Muslims try to do. Finally, we have silver. Silver is a footloose, a twinkling light, a shiny lantern that glows at night like the ones we see here. That are so all of the colorful things we've seen make up the world of my faith, my being. The end. So there we have golden domes. And finally, my newest book about Muslims. It's called It's Curi It's Ramadan Curious George. And I was really excited when the publisher of all the Curious George books asked me if I would like to write a book about Curious George. Would I like to have a book about Curious George and Ramadan? And guess what I told them? <laughs> was I right? Yeah, I said I knew people would be really excited to have something like this. So I'm glad they did it. And I hope you like it. It's Ramadan Curious George. A special month. So you guys can see here it's this fourth book that has tabs on it. So each tab is like a little mini chapter, right? So you guys are seeing one one side of the page at a time. So I'll hold it like this too. You have this book? Yeah. Oh, you have another book like this. Yes, a lot of books are done this way. And the books, the other books in the series are all the same. And Curious George had celebrated Christmas and Hanukkah and other holidays. And that's where he thought it was important to include, include uh, Ramadan as well. So, a special month. George can't wait for tomorrow, when the month of Ramadan will start. It's a special time of year for his friends, and George is going to take part. George and Kareem are so busy helping to cook and bake sweets. With a good little monkey joining in, there's a big pile of treats. Kareem is going to try fasting, a day without food or drinks. George is curious. Can Kareem do it? 
he'll need some help, George thinks. Day of fasting. George is asleep in his bed when Kareem's alarm starts to beep. Kareem waits for an early meal, though the sun is still fast asleep. Who can tell me what that early meal is called? Right, so it's, but he's getting up for what meal? For Sahur, right? Later, when it's lunchtime, Kareem reaches for a piece of bread. Wait, no food until sundown. George keeps him busy instead. What is the sound George is hearing? It's a rumbling from Kareem's tummy. George drags him away from the kitchen. Whatever is cooking smells yummy. Hey, George is a good friend. He's keeping his his friends are being busy so he doesn't eat by accident, right? He can't eat until sundown. So now they're waiting for sunset, right? Everyone gathers together as the sun begins to set. The minutes tick by slowly. It still isn't dark enough yet. Finally, it's time to break fast. Kareem snacks on a sweet date. Then he takes a big gulp of milk as George loads more treats on his plate. I did it, George, cheers Kareem. George nods, he's glad to be there. The room is filled with happiness and the peaceful sounds of prayer. It's dinner time. Now it is time to eat dinner. The spread on the table looks great. With something special for everyone, this meal was well worth the wait. Look at all the great choices. Gamal's curry, veggies, and rice. George spots a big pizza and takes a hot, cheesy slice. Now that the meal is over, the best treat has been saved for last. Chocolate-dipped bananas to celebrate Kareem's first fast. Sharing with others. Kareem invites George to the mosque. They gather to do a, great, a good deed. Together they make food baskets to share with others in need. Wow, look at George join the action. He knows how to lend a hand. And when he buys a shelf full of shoes, George comes up with a plan. You guys see George is looking, he's working with his hands and his feet here. And here he sees everyone's shoes in the cubbies, and he thinks it's a good idea to put them in the, in the baskets. No, George, the imam says with a laugh, those shoes belong to us here. But you gave me a great idea. We'll add a clothes drive next year. George is going to finish this, but it always ends up being something good, right? Spotting the moon. Ramadan is almost over. The special month will end soon. George and the man search the sky to catch a glimpse of the moon. There it is, George points. He found it. A thin crescent shining bright. Tomorrow is the Eid festival, but the celebration will start tonight. Kareem gives George a gift. New clothes for Eid, he says. It's a fancy vest for George. And for the man, a yellow fez. So the man is swapping out his regular hat for a fez for Eid. An Eid celebration. Happy Eid! The holiday is here. The mosque is busy and loud. Everyone is dressed in their finest. What a good looking crowd! George greets Kareem with a hug and spends the day with his friend. After hours of feasting and fun, they are sad he has to end. But soon it's time to go home as the moon returns to the skies. George thinks of his first Ramadan and smiles as he closes his eyes. The end. Thank you, guys. So those are the three books that I've written that are about Muslims. And I'll just tell you, though, that these are the same ones that I have here. Um, I've also written some other books that are not about Muslims, 
I'll just show you guys real quick and I'll show you what I have coming next. So these are the books I just read to you. I've also written a couple middle grade novels that are choose your own adventure themes. And the reason I mention this is even because they're not about Islam, um, I try to put Muslim characters wherever I can into my books. So each of these books has a Muslim character in it. Um, here we have the characters from the Amazon book, and there's an Egyptian doctor named Rania Suleiman who's part of your expedition group. So I think it's important for Muslim kids to be in all types of books, right? Not just ones that are specifically about Islam. And finally, like people ask me what I have coming up next. So I've written another book about Curious George on a farm, which again is not, there's no actual Muslim characters in that one, but just animals. Um, I have a middle grade novel, inshallah, coming out next spring um, through Simon & Schuster's new Muslim imprint called Salam Reads. It's for fourth to sixth grade, uh, and it's called Amina's Voice. And then the publisher of uh, Golden Jones and Silver Lanterns is also doing a follow-up book to this, which will be uh, the same illustrator and me teaming up together, but this time instead of colors, it's going to be shapes. So. Uh, introducing more beautiful things in the Islamic world through the use of shapes. So that's what I have coming up next. Um, but thank you guys for listening, and if we have any questions, um, we can talk for a few minutes before you guys go on to do your craft. Yeah? Yeah, and then we have a special guest coming. Uh, if we have any questions real quick, or if not, we can, we can bring out our special guest. Yeah. You have some questions? She's practicing how to fast, right? So a lot of times kids do a half fast or practice a little bit until they start fasting the whole day, right? Yeah. Right. You can do it in all next year when you get older. Right. So some of you guys will in Java start fasting when you're a little bit older. Anyone else have a quick question? No? Okay, let's bring out the special guest who's here.